greetings and salutations, and welcome back to Halo Cannon. I'm your host Toa Freak, and before we get into things, I just want to make a couple quick announcements. First, I want to apologize for how late this video is. It's been three weeks since my last video, and I know that back when I made the apology video, I promised a video every two weeks. Obviously, I've missed that deadline, and I want to thank you all for your patience. Second, a little while back, we hit 100 subscribers. 100 subscribers is kind of a milestone here on YouTube, so I want to say thank you to all my subscribers for those who have been here from the beginning and uh, all my new ones, and I look forward to uh, more to come. So, thank you all. Now, let's get into the gist of this video. A week and a half after its release, here we are to discuss the final issue of Halo Initiation. A vast improvement over the first two issues, this one is not without its flaws. When telling a story, there are two basic approaches a writer can take. Tell a character-driven story, or a lore-building story. As an example, Halo CE, and really Halo 2 and 3, are universe or lore-building stories. We're introduced to our main characters, events and locations are established, and the overall story immerses us in a rich and vast universe, even if the story is focused on a small part of this universe. Halo 4, on the other hand, is a character-driven story. While we are seeing new places and following new events, the story is focused on the Chief and Cortana and their respective journeys and character evolutions. From the beginning, it is clear that Halo Initiation is meant to be a character-driven story, looking into the background and character of Sarah Palmer. Naturally, a little universe building does happen, it's going to when telling a story, but the main point is to, forgive the pun, initiate the reader with Sarah Palmer. Sadly, the book falls on its ass. Not only does it fail to teach us anything new about Palmer, it makes her appear as a static character. She undergoes no personal dynamic arc, no character evolution, and the story is predictable from start to finish. Now, I did say that the third issue was a vast improvement over the first two, and I mean that. The action scenes are beautifully drawn and the fights are interesting. Sadly, the same cannot be said for the story itself, as it reads more like a fanfic than an official entry into the Halo universe. To be brief, it turns out there was another Spartan 4 program before the one Palmer was recruited into. This program was meant to create Spartans that wouldn't need Mjolnir. Unfortunately, the augmentations killed 9 of the 10 participants, and the 10th went insane. This 10th Spartan is Isla Zane, leader of the Insurrectionists who boarded the Infinity. It turns out she is working for Admiral Matthias Drake, another character whose name has no meaning at this point, who leads the New Colonial Alliance, i.e. the New Insurrectionist Movement. Long story short, the new s force kick ass and send Zane out an airlock. While they celebrate, Zane, who somehow survived in the vacuum of space, is recovered by an OD prowler. We are left with her saying something along the lines of, Why are you here? You know, suspense. This story has little to add to the Halo universe, and so many things that are just plain unnecessary. We definitely didn't need the whole original S4 program. Introducing the new insurrections could have been done in Mortal Dictata, which I'm sure will happen anyway, and the story in no way leads into Spartan Assault. Halo Initiation falls short of doing anything to add to the established universe, and is in no way relevant to any other Halo stories thus far. Maybe it will be down the line, but it sure doesn't feel like it. I want to close this with an open letter to 343 Industries. You started off so well. Halo Evolutions got us excited about you. It's full of interesting stories and adds so much to the Halo universe. The Forerunner books were a huge hit, and Halo 4's campaign and Spartan Ops were pretty damn good in their own right. Forward Under Dawn did so well that it paved the way for a TV series, and Halo Legends... Well, you know, I thought it was good. But then we got the Kilo 5 books, and now Halo Initiation. Something happened with these latest entries in the Halo universe. Kilo 5 is nothing but 700 pages of Halsey's evil so far, and... Well, I've said enough about initiation. Please, 343, look back at these early works. Look back at some of these early Halo stories and see what made them work. For comics, look at stories like Helljumper or Bloodlines. Helljumper had nothing to do with Halo 3 ODST, but expanded on the characters of Dutch and Romeo, made them more believable, and really added some exciting mysteries to the Halo universe. In the end, nothing really happened, but it was an exciting journey. Now look at Bloodlines, new characters, tons of new lore, and even some peaks in the Sangheili society. Again, it has nothing to do with major events in the Halo universe, but it was still a nice, self-contained journey that entertained fans, introduced a number of new mysteries, and expanded upon events we thought we knew everything about. I could go into more, but I think I've made my point. I do hope 343 sees this, and I want to. I have to believe that things will get better. The next big entry in the Halo universe is Escalation, so here's to hoping it will be a huge success. This has been Halo Cannon, and I want to end this with a toast to the future of Halo. <sighs> See you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and check us out on Facebook and Twitter. In other news, I am planning to host another giveaway, and I'd like some ideas as to how to go about this. Leave any suggestions in the comments below. 
Thanks in advance. This is Halo Cannon, signing off.